Let's go. Let's go. Listen, it's not always pretty, but a win is a win. Guys, let's talk about it on the therapy session. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every day. This is a therapy session brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more right now. New customers bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I won money on this game because I bet Wisconsin money line. A little squeaky there for a second, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you could say that. (laughs) Guys, I want to start here. A lot to talk about. And these these therapy shows are always much more fun when we win. Braden Locke's the guy. Like, I I think we found a quarterback. And Mm -hmm. I want to point specifically to that play where he got blindsided, got knocked on his, you know what, a lot of quarterbacks that takes him out of a game. If if not by injury, like mentally, they're they're toast. And he, we saw him yeah. get better after that hit. He, that, that's he, mojo. He got jittery for one play after it, and then after that, seemed locked in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I the, the big takeaway from this, like his stats are sneaky, sneaky good because they could have been much, much better. We talked about in the the game when Mordecai had the game against uh, who was that a couple weeks ago, where we had like six drops. And there were some tougher catches that he couldn't that weren't made. There were like five or six easy, like routine catches in this game that were dropped for mm-hmm. big yardage. And they actually set the offense back. And probably we would have been in better shape, you know, earlier in this game had we made the easy plays. Like he he could have had a, a really good stat line in this game. And it, it kind of stinks that he's like around 50% passing because anybody that watched the game would be like, Yeah, he he wasn't 50% passing in this game. He was he was legit putting the ball on the money and guys weren't making plays for him. I mean, look, Locke is the man. I'm, I'm, I have several things I just want to say. First of all, we wanted to win. We got to win. It's ugly. We are not a great team. Let's get that out there. I, yes, the team was overhyped. Yes, we we played a part in that. And, and the offensive line is mainly the reason that we're not. But, I mean, come on. A win is a win. And Braden Locke is the man. We said... He throws a pretty ball. He throws good deep balls. I mean, look, he his pocket presence, by the way, fantastic. The poise that he shows. He's my player of the game, hands down, because, yes, I know Braylon Out had a great game, 145 yards, I believe, but you talk about a guy who basically has zero college experience to come in down 14 points and to bring us back like that. And he had receivers dropping balls. He had linemen who couldn't block. He had – I mean, he he, he – he, he wasn't given a lot of, you know, like gimmies here to say, oh yeah, like we'll just help you through this. No, he had to do it on his own. He is awesome. And I'm really glad that we got this game because look, next week we play Ohio State. Now we can look forward to that game. And before I was thinking, gosh, we're going to go to Madison and just be just having the worst time. Depressed. This <laughs> and now we have something. Now we just don't care. Now we <laughs> we assume it's going to be a loss. We have Braden Locke who's doing what he needs to do. If we can just clean up the silliness, we would be so much better. Catch the ball. Stop with the dumb penalties. But, guys, yeah. hey, Iowa lost today too. The West is back in play. Believe it. Listen, what do so, we say? What do we say about Minnesota when everybody said – or Iowa – Rajiv, you and I were on kind of on an island with this. I feel like everyone said it's over. I'm like, we both said, and Justin, I think you did too. Iowa can easily lose two yeah. more games. I I offense is terrible. terrible. I, I, th- I definitely thought it was over. It would take – Oh, I, the, I, oh maybe. I, I didn't think it was over at all. I'll, I'll flat out say it. The reality with Iowa is, is as good as their defense is, they are two busted plays in a game away from losing a game because the offense can't do anything. You put up 14 points on them and the game is – I mean, look at today. What was it, 12-10 to 10 was the final score? Like yeah. you, you have any semblance of an offense and can put up some points. If you get into double digits, you have a chance to beat Iowa. And that stinks because they're, they're special teams and defense are great this year. And their offense is completely hanging them out to dry. And that, that three twenty five, I've, I've got to believe that's borderline out of reach at this point. <laughs> like he can't even be remotely in the ballpark on that. Yeah. Uh, a couple comments in here. Comment on lucky number four got thrown out of the game for Illinois. He's a beast, and we couldn't handle him. I was going to say there's there's two things that two big things that were a, a, a factor in this game. Braylon Allen ran really hard, and and stayed on the field and kept making plays for us. 
And Newton coming out of the game is probably the reason we won this game. <clears throat> because if you have him in there on that last drive, I we would have had a problem keeping him out of out of uh, Locke's lap. And Bell finally making a catch, by the way. Good that God. Was that, that was a beautiful was, throw. He dropped that in the bucket. More. We've got to do more for our quarterback. We've got to make some of these catches. And it's just – that's really been a disappointment. And I want to say one more thing about the receivers. Bryson Green, I'm sorry, but your route running is really a bit of a stinker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, that the crossing route, the, the, the crossing routes that Pauling was running the whole game and DK ran them, they were open. When Bryson Green ran, it wasn't open because he didn't cut, he didn't run a good cross yeah. running, kind of like dinked around, really bad route running. The 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 fade route on the right side, I feel like he could have made a better play there. I haven't been very pleased with with what I've said Bryson Green. He, he, he the one that got knocked down off over the middle, he rounded off his route and yeah. allowed the guy to get underneath him. That was yeah. that, that's 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 why that guy that play got broken up. It wasn't a, great, wasn't a great throw, but he rounded the route off and allowed the, the defender to get back underneath him. Well, let's let's talk about receivers for a second because I don't want to be too much of a victim of the moment. Like certainly, there's a lot of bad that happened in this game. Oh, We're all excited. Good let's God, yes. Like I had somebody. I'll put the comment up there. Like you guys sound super excited for beating Illinois or something. I'm like, yeah. I am because I'm a yeah. fan. Like I, yeah. you know, let me say this actually before I get to the receivers, we're going to if we're going to win this year, we're going to win kind of ugly. It just yeah. is what it is at this point. So don't expect thirty point wins. Like winning ugly is way better than losing ugly. We keep saying that, and it's friggin' true. I, I'm well, sorry, I'm not going to apologize for being excited about winning. <laughs> I, I, the biggest takeaway I had from this, and we we had really struggled to see this offense looking like it was capable of being run by us. With with Locke in there, it looked, and Rajiv and I were talking about this before you came on, it looked much crisper with Locke at quarterback. And not only that, but you can see the flow of it when things are working and how it, it kind of puts a defense in a bind. And especially today, did not have great conditions. And everyone that's like, oh, I don't know, you can't pass the ball when it gets windy and blah, blah. Yeah, there were like 25-mile-an-hour gusts going on in, in Illinois for this game. I didn't see it really affect the passing game too much. The drops were the problem in this game. It had nothing to do with the ball getting blown around and us struggling to to kind of push the ball down the field. Mm -hmm. So two things for the receivers. One, Will Pauling is the man. He's absolutely mm -hmm. the man. <clears throat> the, the touchdown, <laughs> that was a guy making a play. We talked yeah. about for weeks, we yeah. receivers to go make a play. That was that ball was going to get picked off all day. He went up. He made the play. He high-pointed it. He took it away from the defender. Great job. And I mean, maybe our second best receiver, maybe Nolan Rucci. How about that, baby? Not the second yeah. best receiver, but Nolan Rucci. Hey, thank God he's six eight. I'll say that. I'll tell you what, <laughs> that ball's in the air, okay? And he's going up, and that thing's like up here. I was like, oh no, this is totally gonna be a drop. But kudos to him for that. I mean, but and it was good, it's good to see CJ Williams getting a little action too. But again, I just think we need more from these guys. Pauling yeah. is the man, he is the absolute guy. DK, boy, he had that. Uh, he had that a perfect ball over the middle. It could have been a touchdown. I don't think it would have been a touch. I think it would have been tackled. But I think he would have to lay out to catch it. Right. So it but you got to catch it. You got to catch it. But I think the receivers ultimately the takeaway for the receivers is you got to do more. They need to just be better. There is a lot mm -hmm. of talent there, and and I'll say this: if they're not going to be better, let's get some new blood in there. Yeah. Put Vinny Anthony in there. Put Tretch in there. Let's mm -hmm. see more guys. If these guys can't make plays, find someone who will. That's a good point. Uh, Tyler Schieber says, Pauling receiver one for sure. I want to put this out there. Spencer Wagner says, hey, shout out to Michael Wagner, longtime fan, never seen his comments. So, yeah, what's up, Michael? I saw you in the chat earlier. Thank you for joining us. I saw one of your comments, so I definitely want to give you a shout out. Spencer, thank you for pointing that out. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk about the things that frustrated you most this game. I want you to pick out one or two things that frustrated you the most. And then we have a lot more to talk about. A bunch of your comments. Um, Rajiv, Justin, I'll probably turn the comment section over to you guys for the next section. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think is interesting, throw up there. Uh, but first, let's take a quick break for our friends of the show. Definitely. And this one is is very apropos. We're going to leave Justin and Rajiv up for this one, too, because we're all in this together on the therapy sessions. Uh, BetterHelp. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. And if you ever need in therapy, like, <laughs> this, is a perfect, this is a perfect ad. For the therapy for, session. For the therapy <laughs> session. Listen, BetterHelp is, if you're ever struggling with anything in life, it doesn't have to be something that, you know, a lot of people, you know, connect therapy with incredibly tough life situations. Somebody dies, something like that. Therapy can just help you get through your day-to-day -day anxiety, day-to-day -day issues, job struggles, personal stress, whatever it is. Therapy is there for you. Don't, you don't have to have, there's the stigma with it should be gone. My wife's a therapist. She helps people all the time. I see the help 
So if you need help with something, reach out. BetterHelp is a great way to do it fully online. And it is a wonderful place if you need a little bit of help just navigating your day-to-day -day life. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash college today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash college. Today's episode also brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel. I don't know about y'all, but I won money today on, on, this, on, the, on the Badgers because I bet with my heart. Not like Rajiv, right, who bets with his, his mind. I bet with my heart. I lay my fandom on the line when I bet. And I won today on FanDuel because the Badgers – Money line, I covered it. I also had the Minnesota Iowa game under 30, which the 30 <laughs> line is incredible. And I still felt confident. Like, of course, they're going to be under 30. Ridiculous. Rajiv, all I'm hearing from this is that Ryan's going to be buying the drinks this next week. You know it. You know <laughs> it. You know because <laughs> Ryan's going to be broke next week because I'm going to bet on the to win again. That's how I roll. Oh, I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. My place for betting is FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Right now, new customers bet $5, get 200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. All right, let's get back into this, guys. Uh, like I said, something that frustrated you the most this game. <sighs> I'm, I'll, I'll, start. I'll, I'll start. And it's our inability to have proper linebacker play, especially on the inside. And more, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with more specific, setting the edge. <clears throat> well, listen, we made Luke Altmaier. Someone put it in the Discord. I don't I don't know who wrote it in there, but we made Luke Altmaier look like Michael Vick. I mean, that is exactly what happened. He was all over the place, and we couldn't set any kind of edge. We were taking bad angles. Look, we know that when he's running that RPO, he's gonna keep it like half the time. There was one play where CJ Getz was literally staring at him slid inside and then just let him go outside. I'm like, that's your guy. Go and get him. Daryl Peterson did the same yep. thing. Like, what are you doing? It's like, if that's your responsibility, go take that guy and let him be your responsibility. Mm -hmm. He got off way too easy. I mean, that guy, several plays, he He's, would have been tackled in the backfield, but we just let him loose for no reason. He had a hundred yards rushing, a hundred yards rushing. It's unacceptable. And you know, last week we talked about how our offense was really the downfall of the game and the defense did enough to win. And yes, they got gashed a little bit, but today we could have won this game much easier if we had proper defense. Cause let me tell you something, mm -hmm. Purdue walked, just whooped this team 44 to 19. I think this, this team is not that good. We should have been in a better situation, especially defensively. We should not have let Luke Altmaier look like we have, you know, no athletes. And that's really the answer. We don't have enough athletes on the defense. We just don't have it. We don't have the speed. We don't have the athleticism, except for a few guys. And a few guys played really well, but so much of the linebacking core just wasn't fast enough to really contain Luke Altman. I'm going to push back a little bit on that. They, we're definitely lacking athletes, but the it's a lot of the issues that we're seeing. Our guys are they're It's bad technique. The guys are making – they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing in terms of how they're supposed to be playing. I agree with and, you. And it's – and because of that, it's it's sloppy, and it's it leads to things like yeah. that, like losing contain. You know, like you don't have to be an amazing athlete; you just have to get out there and you have to hold that ground. So you're forcing that guy from having an open lane, and and we saw that. I agree with you. Part of what I saw is lack of aggressiveness. Like Peterson had him dead to rights and just has to come at him. Instead, he kind of broke down and stood there and waited for him to make a move and got completely beat. Now I will give Altmaier some credit. He's, he is a he is a pretty good runner. Yeah. He is slippery, but yeah, he he shouldn't be going for a hundred on us. I don't mind you getting forty, but he couldn't pass. Like there's like we could have basically just come uphill and basically played them like Nebraska from the you know 1990s because there there's zero passing threat. Yeah, I want to combine what what both you said and then move on to the thing that frustrated me. So I think it's a, a combination of a lack of athletes and the lack of technique, right? Because we yeah. saw a play where Latou blitzed in and just let him run to the outside. Just stay on the outside shoulder. Like, that's your job. Force mm -hmm. him inside. But here's the thing. When, you, when you're not playing with great technique you don't and you don't have the athleticism, you can't make yeah. up for yeah, those. You're, you're toast both right? ways, yep. Or you're toast both ways because the really great athletes can make up for bad technique. Mm -hmm. The thing that killed me, guys, is it's the, it's the JV-level mistakes. It's the mm -hmm. drop snap on a field goal. It's penalties on the first four drives offensively. Yep. Right? That, like, that was brutal to me. Four straight drives with a penalty that puts you behind the sticks with a young quarterback. No, you can't. The, the weirdness with Chim on punt recovery. Like, there's a couple plays where he, it looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, it's these little things that continue to crop up. That's what frustrated me the most. Like, stop being so undisciplined, right? Mm -hmm. The penalties are killing you. Um, 
the the technique stuff we talked about is this one thing catch you should never miss a field goal when you have the ball inside the 20 yard line like these things have to get corrected it's ridiculous at this point and those things are on this staff like we talk a lot about in my opinion we talk a lot about the roster and what's on paul chris and recruiting failures the discipline stuff that's on this staff that bug stops with yeah. Their opinion. yeah i agree greg linscombe just said here why we're so undisciplined lack of containment bad mental penalties substitution issues yeah, I mean, that's that's really surprising. I mean, this is the one thing that I feel like was totally unforeseen coming into the year was the coaching issues as far as being able to fix these discipline stuff, right? Like how many false starts are we going to have? And, mm -hmm. and all these issues, that is a coaching thing. And you're right. And this is something that we did not foresee, right? And, and I think that's been, it's probably to me the most surprising thing we've seen of this team so far this year is our inability to play clean football and we're making way too many mistakes for such a high powered coaching staff that we were so excited about, which we still are excited about, but these things have got to get cleaned up. And we were saying that after week one, the way week two needs to be cleaned up. Week three needs to be cleaned up. Well, now we've played seven games. It's, it's time for it to be clean and it can't continue because this game we almost lost. And next week, while well, that's pretty much going to be a loss, every game after that are winnable games for us. And if we don't clean this up, we will lose more football games. So one of the things that I'm kind of seeing with this is that when you kind of look at the way things have played out, um, it feels like the coaching staff does not necessarily feel like the talent behind these guys is quality enough to, to hold them accountable. Like we see guys that are making boneheaded mistakes and doing stupid things, and it feels like they're not confident in the guys that are behind them to be able to be like, no, if you're going to make mistakes like this, I'm going to play the other guy because he's, you know, the gap isn't that close. I think we overrated this roster, all of us. Mm -hmm. I, I think everyone thought that there was, there was some talent in there based off some of the recruiting classes to think that they're with a good coaching staff, they'd be able to do it. The, what I'm finding here is that after these ones and the ones really aren't that great, there's, there's just not much there. So I, I don't even know what to say about how things are going to play out going forward. But on the defensive side of the football, I there's nobody that seems to be pushing for young guys. Like, have we seen anyone really come in and get pushed their way into the two deep and start getting reps? I, I mean, um, especially at linebacker, like none, nobody young at the linebacker positions has repped at all. Chris, Christian Allegro got some reps today. That yes, that was new, and, um, and he and he is a guy that obviously is from the new staff. Yep. But yes, he's somebody that projects physically too, compared to most of the guys. All right, let's take one more quick break. Then we're going to come back. We're going to sandwich this show. We have the excitement, the negativity, and we're going to finish with how big of a win this more is. Yes, yeah, it's just a more excitement. More excitement. More excitement. Because honestly, again, we're fans. Like, I want to. I don't want to ever be in a spot where I feel bad about beating a team. I don't know. Like, I know it wasn't pretty. It was ugly, but it's a, also a win. Um, and I'm pretty excited about that. So coming back, we got your comments, Rajiv and Justin. Find some good ones. Throw it up there if you don't mind. And then um, we'll finish it off there. Today's episode is brought to you by our great friends over at Bird Dogs. I've talked about my Bird Dogs a lot. You will never want to take off your Bird Dog shorts. And honestly, they are an instrumental tool to my wardrobe and my outfit. They make – how many people – I, I always thought, you know, like when you become an adult, it's, it's easy. Dressing has always been difficult for me, guys, because I was in the Navy for nine years. I never had to figure out what to do. Like I don't know how to tie a tie. I have a zipper tie. Um Bird dogs help me look like a normal human adult when I'm out there. So people don't throw change at me like a homeless bum. They are incredible, comfortable, versatile. You can wear them anywhere. You will not want to take them off. Go to birddogs.com slash lockdown college. Enter promo code lockdown college at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. Birddogs.com slash lockdown college. Free water bottle at checkout. You will not want to take them off. We promise you. So, Ryan. I think we just need to get you some geranimals. Then you can just match up the animal on the outfit <clears> and, and make sure that you have a, a outfit that's meant to be put together. Oh, I love it. All right. So I want to I want to read this one from from Victor Jones here. This show is hilarious. I'm so much more positive than you guys on the team. We haven't won a game like this in years. This was a nice turn of events. So here's what I want to say regarding this is that it's not that we're negative on the team. It's that when you look at what's happened this season with a lot of the undisciplined disciplined play. We haven't seen other players brought in for the guys who are making mistakes. And when I look at that, like the offensive line, when Nelson has had those games where he would consistently have a, you know, a procedural penalty, we're not putting Nolan Rucci out there. When when we have somebody else that gets a holding call or something 
you know, stupid. We don't seem to be having anybody behind them that's pushing, that's being thrown in there to say, hey, sit and think about this and stew for a second and do better. And that's kind of, I think, what we're more talking about. It's not that we're necessarily negative. It's more, if we're going to talk discipline, that's how you hold guys accountable. Like you're going to prove it's either you're going to do it right or you're not going to play. Yeah, I want to talk to this, to this quote too because, and it's you're right, Victor, and thank you for the comment. We might be more negative than a lot of people, but I've said this after after losses too, where I've been positive on things. There's always good and bad from every game. Mm-hmm. We literally just stole victory from the jaws of defeat mm-hmm. in a game where we were pretty up. We were pretty bad for the yeah. first half. We were down twenty one to seven. Like. Yeah, it's a great win. I'm super excited about it. I think it changes the trajectory of the season, but let's not gloss over all the issues that are still there. And that's all I'm saying. But like I'm I'm I you should have saw I was losing my mind when Ruchi caught the touchdown. I'm I'm like <laughs> oh, I'm, I'll sleep so much better tonight. You guys have no idea. Oh, but there's no, still no, no, no. we're being honest, there's still there there's warts here that we still are gonna talk about. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, and we've said this about basketball as well, <clears throat> in any sport, close games are never all good or all bad because they're mm-hmm. close. I mean, it absolutely could have ended a different way. We were at down 21-7. You know, most people would have said, yeah, we're, we're, I'm sure that the ESPN, like, sort of projector had us way down. Like, we, we are, our predictability to win must have been really low at one point. So, yeah, there are there are good and bad. But, look, we do have to take the good because there there are there is a lot of things to look up for. And, and Braden Locke is really that guy. Braden Locke is the reason that I'm, I'm more excited about things because I feel like – our offense can turn around a little bit now, right? With when Locke has time, I think it's very clear. Mm-hmm. Ryan, you and I were talking on the phone during the game. When when Locke has time, he can pick. He can pick. He, sees, he can. He ask, sees the field he, very well. He sees yeah. the field well. He makes the throws properly. So it's all about that, you know, giving him more time. And I'm sure that the they'll, they'll get better and better. Hopefully, hopefully the O line can do their part. But there is a lot to look forward to right now. There's a lock to look forward to right now. I like and it. I mean. We've got a big game next week, and think about the momentum going into this game. Think about how much more the fans, including the three of us being in the stadium, are going to be up for that game and drive the team forward because the atmosphere means a lot when you're at home, and, and it's a night game at Camp Randall. Had we lost this game, it would have been a little bit more difficult to, to really get up for that game. But now, now all of a sudden, I was just lost. The West is totally up for grabs. If we find a way to beat Ohio State, the West is really in play at that point. So there is a lot of positives. But I do think it's fair to point out the things that really didn't work. And, and they're the things that have frankly been, you know, just been our Achilles heel all year long. It's stupid penalties. It's bad plays. It's bad offensive line blocking. Even the run blocking. Look, I know Braylon had 145 yards, but some of the run blocking from Fergie mm-hmm. especially was just weak. And uh, we can be so much better. But, yes, Victor and everyone else, I know JB's in here saying the same thing. Look, you're right. We won the game. It is exciting. And I screamed and I went crazy. Yep. I'm so much happier now, and there is a lot to look forward to for sure. But there's still things that – I think the frustrating thing, guys, is that when you look at all the mistakes we're making, we're so close to being good. We're mm-hmm. just so close because we've made so many silly mistakes that if those are gone, where are we right now? Your we margin for error gets a lot bigger. Iowa without dumb mistakes. So it's just like I just want us to be the team that we, were, we thought we were going to be, and maybe we aren't, and that's okay. But – we're just we're so close to being good if we can eliminate some of these things. So I want to ask you. Oh, I just want to say this: Tyler Kirstley, who feels like not a Wisconsin fan, says you are not beating OSU with a bunch of smiley emojis. Yeah, we know. Who's, who said we, we know. were? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was a comment made by anybody in here. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Okay, sorry, Justin. So I was gonna. I wanted to throw this question out to you two guys. Now, how did you feel about the play calling in the the late third quarter when we picked up the ball there? Because I was not in love with it. I was. I felt like we were burning clock that we didn't have, being down 14 points, and we were running the football consistently and just watching it dwindle. And I'm like, I like. I want to get that score on the board before the third quarter ends. So we're only down seven, and it felt like we were just kind of like, ah, don't worry about it. We'll get it there eventually. I mean, it worked out in the end. But I was sitting there. I'm like, this, like the way we're struggling to stop their quarterback. Like, I don't want to have to sit here and wait and have it come down to the last where we have to make a stop in order to get an opportunity to tie the game. There were definitely times where I'm sorry. There were definitely times where I was frustrated with running the ball, and I don't really know how effective it was in, in holding their safeties up close to the line and things like that. I I'm going to look for some of that stuff on the rewatch, but you know, yeah, I, I do want us to be a little more, a little more fast and up tempo. I do think though that again, it kind of goes back to some things we've talked about with 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 um, Phil Longo and 
do we have the – I think maybe he was afraid of turning the ball over. He's got a quarterback who has no experience, so I think he does have to mix in that run. He does have to kind of take his time and and give Locke time to really de- – for things to develop because is Locke ready to have a two-minute offense and just going down the field really quickly and, and making those quick decisions? Maybe, maybe not. And I think he probably could. So, yeah, in general, I agree with you. I, I was frustrated with the, with, the, with the lack of tempo, but I think that maybe some of that has to do with just the inexperience of Locke and the fact that we were obviously trying to keep their safeties up or whatever. I mean, that they were playing a lot of us yeah. high safety. Too, that was but. a really weird defensive formation. I've never yeah. seen a safety Purdue play. Purdue did the deep. same thing, actually. Purdue had a guy 30 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Looks Almost like he's receiving a punt. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't love the tempo either, Justin, at that. But to Rajiv's point, I think new quarterback on the road, offensive line still is. Part of it is, too, I bet you Longo's more confident running tempo if his offensive line mm-hmm. isn't continuing to either miss blocks or have false starts. My concern with it was mostly if if that first run gets blown up, then you're putting your quarterback into obvious passing downs, and like you don't really have – you're setting him up for failure. It's like we, we complained about that with Graham Mertz all the time where it was like run, run, pass. And when you're in a game like this where it's tight, the last – and lock. You know, he seems like he, he's a sharp dude, but think of how much better he'd be when teams are not expecting him to be throwing. Now, he yep. threw 40 times in this game, so it wasn't like he didn't have opportunities. It's just, I guess, the way that we kind of align them at times is kind of like, all right, I don't really have an issue with how much we threw or how much we ran, but maybe the the way that in which we set them up is not something I was in love with. Uh, Dylan Ward asks if Ricardo Holman's going to be following Marvin Harrison Jr. next weekend. He's going to try. <laughs> off his prime, and it's not going to yeah. matter with with Marvin Harrison. I, guys, I want to flip it to this a little bit too. Like this staff, and how long? How many games have we had like this where we folded and we haven't been able to finish? Right, the staff has preached mm-hmm. it a bunch of them last year. Like it, it feels that that last call for Longo. By the way, how long have we talked about where's the creativity with Longo? Like <laughs> finished, right? Like yeah. this team showed a lot of. Yeah, I can't swear on the show. I almost did. This team showed a lot of effing heart and tenacity because they could have folded. A lot of teams fold down twenty one seven when it's not going right. This team did not fold. They they went on a run. They dominated the third and fourth quarters. The defense came up with stops when they needed it. Mm-hmm. Longo had an incredible play call. Like that that last twenty minutes of the game. That's the best twenty minutes of Wisconsin football since dot dot dot. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you know, like. You're absolutely right. And we said it in our, our three big things on the Bucky report. Number one was heart and dedication and determination. We needed to play with that heart. The first half, that was really wasn't there. And we didn't have that. Last year, if you remember during this Illinois game, Paul Chris made his famous speech of, you know, there's a draw, we got to draw a line in the sand and it's time to really show who's gonna play or whatever, whatever he said. Didn't work. Well, let me tell you something. Clearly, Luke Fickle got through to his guys at halftime because you're absolutely right. We played with a lot of heart. We were we wanted to win the game. We had we were more hungry, and you could see that at the end of the game. And when we got the ball down two scores, we moved down. We put it in the end zone. Going for two was a great two point call, by the way, to Nolkowski. Excellent play. And then you know our defense stepped up when it needed to. I was a little worried about our defense being able to stop Luke Altmaier at the end, but we did. And yeah, I mean, heart is going to win you games when they're close. How much heart and how hungry you are. Is going to be that small bit of difference that it takes to win really, really close games. So kudos to the guys in that. The second half, far superior to the first when it comes to that. Yes. Uh, Logan Couch says, we play all state on Halloween weekends. It's going to be super loud at Camp Randall. Anything can happen. Yeah. Like, when I say we're not going to beat Ohio State, I mean, we're probably not going to beat Ohio State. But I'm going to go into there's, that. There's a 10% chance. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we're going to be there, and we're going to be cheering really, really hard for it. Predict the line. Guys, let's, let's do a quick contest here. Predict the line. Anyone can start. And in, in, if you're in chat, do it sure. too. Predict, predict the Ohio State line next weekend. I would say Ohio State minus 10 and a half. I'm probably going to go with I think it's, I, I, I'm going to say it's probably going to be 14. Be I don't nine. think it'll be that high at home. But. I'm going to say 12 and a half. I think it's a little higher. Uh, Ryan says 27 and a half. He <laughs> <laughs> probably means Wisconsin minus 27 and a half. Yeah. No one, Ryan. Uh, Guys, anything else that's a player of the game, someone else that surprised you, uh, anything else from this game before we kind of shut this one down? Well, I mean, I got we got to go. There's there's several guys that made big plays in this game, but Will Pauling, like, do we when we talk about wide receiver one, Will Pauling is that dude this season. The receptions and yards, 
touchdowns. We only have four of them on the season, so <laughs> they're kind of split up. You know, I think I, I got to just play the game to me is Brady Lahawk. I just feel like what poise and, you know, like it's, it's very difficult to come into your first full game with a week of practice to lead your team out there, especially in the position we were in at halftime and then going down 21 seven, like that's, that, that's really impressive. That takes a lot. And, and for him to come out here and play the way he did, it really sets things up for his future at Wisconsin. We don't know, you know, wh- whether or not we'll see Mordecai this year, we don't know. And, you know, I think Locke, I think we're all comfortable with Locke playing there. Mm-hmm. Great job. Also, Braylon Allen, we haven't really talked much, much about, too much about Braylon Allen today. You know, he had that one big uh, 45 yarder. He had 145 yards. He ran hard. He bounced off tackles. He showed why he's still our number one running back. You know, he's been a guy that we've been kind of hot or cold on throughout the season. He didn't put the ball on the ground. So yeah. kudos to him. He had a great game. Um, and I think that's that's been really impressive. So, yeah. I think the Braylon one is a great call because we I feel like we've been a little hard on Braylon at times. And I'm yeah. not saying it's not deserved. He he was a man this game. He ran hard, yeah. distant. He caught the we- ball well. He had, he had a couple of really good pass protection pickups too. We talked about one of them, uh, like he, he on one of uh, I think it was the thirty yard pass to pulling over the middle. That was that was Braylon Allen on the the blitz pickup there. So really good game from Braylon Allen. A, a shout out to the dairy rate on this one. If you guys follow him on Twitter, he said flat out that the Braylon Allen Texas route basically set up the the Will Pauling touchdown. So you know, yeah, he was great in this game, and that that catch was one of the bigger ones of the game because if he doesn't make that. Like there were there were several. Heck, he had the first down run that that when we needed it was it that was absolutely huge for us to be able to continue that last drive. So I mean, there were a n- number of guys that stepped up in the second half. I, I feel like the big takeaway I have from this is offensively, this is the first time first game I've watched this offensively where there seemed like some continuity to the offense. Like it didn't seem like a mishmash of things we just kind of threw together to you know duct tape together to get down the field and score. It actually looked like it was coherent. Yeah. Um, Tyler Kersley says, Ohio State 56 70 is the Ohio State fan. I just want to ask you, Tyler, if we beat you, are you going to show up post game in our therapy session? Because we have them every game, and fan, opposing that fans you never show be. up when we win. So you better show up, Tyler, if we if we knock you off. Um, we are, I do want to throw it out there. All three of us are going to be at the Ohio State game. We're, we're working to find some type of meetup. We're going to be at a tailgate on Saturday, I know for sure, with um, somebody who listens to the show. So I'm excited about that. Justin, I haven't even told you that yet. I've, I'm inviting you to that now. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, we should we should definitely find a time like we did. You know, we were at the Scotty Bar last time when we were in Madison for the spring game. Oh, hopefully, we'll be there again. We'll definitely, you know, find a place and, and let everyone know when we're going to be there. Um, you know, because like we had such a great time at the spring game meeting so many listeners and fans of the show. So it was awesome. It was so great to just talk Badgers and get more perspectives and to, to meet everybody. So, yeah, if, wherever we are, please come out and, and meet us and, and see us. It'd be so fun to hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to wrap it up there so everyone can go watch women's volleyball in Nebraska. No tonight. kidding. Yes. The, the, these girls deserve it, guys. 30 consecutive sets they've won. Yes. So they they deserve it, and they're facing the number two team in the country, and they're number one. So definitely okay. deserve to have people watching them tonight. Can I, can I put you both on the spot really quickly and just ask you, are we winning the West, yes or no? Oh, man. Um, we need Iowa to lose one more yet, right? If if we lose again, <laughs> well, yes, true, but yeah, if we, if the way it's most likely to play out, if Iowa loses again, I will say yes, we win the West. Well, so will they, they if they if they give us the opportunity, they it's hard for me to say. I mean, Nebraska is really the team that you have to look at for that one. Do we feel or or do they? Did Iowa play Illinois already? Yeah, I think Illinois might be able to do to, if that's an ugly game. They, they potentially could win that. But I would huh? say, is Ryan, are you frozen? No. Oh, maybe he is. <laughs> <laughs> he so he's just, now he's, he's just, just gone. Him. But, yeah, um, they may lose another one just simply because the offense is terrible. And they, there's going to be a game where they just don't score. And it's going to work out because the other team will have a touchdown or two touchdowns. And I, I yeah. think that that's going to happen. And it's being proven that they just are – I've never seen a team be this offensively inept where it's just like a foregone conclusion that the only way they're getting into double digits is if the defense makes big defense or special teams makes big plays for them. Yeah. I I think that, 
I'm going to say that I think we are going to win the West only because I do think Iowa's going to lose again. After today, it really just their, – their offense is so bad. And, like, I, I would not have said that had they won, they won today. I mean, I really – I did not expect them to lose to Minnesota, by the way. They did. So we got to expect them to lose again, and we'll see what happens. So, you know, it is what it is. I don't know where Ryan is. Yeah. I don't even know if he can if, – if, if we can even end this show. But I gueah. guess we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> We can keep talking for you guys. Um, yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, following, I mean, Minnesota, I don't think is in the in the run. Um, I just don't see it with them. I mean, they only put 12 points up today. They, they're not a good offensive team. I think if Locke can continue to grow, he's going to be the better quarterback in that game because I just think that he, like the biggest takeaway I have from this is, he makes really good decisions and seems to know where he's supposed to be going with the ball based off what the, the defense is showing. And that's something that we haven't had in a really long time. He has really good anticipation. Um, doesn't seem to get too, too happy feet with the, the pocket. And I mean, listen, Newton was a problem today and he, he stayed really calm in the pocket when things were kind of moving around him a lot and made good throws. I mean, heck that throw to DK was off platform and that was a dart right into the right in there. The, the biggest takeaway I'll have from this is that his arm is better than I expected it to be. And that's something that I was, I was concerned with, with him. He showed a pretty good, good job to, for at least the college level to be able to push the ball down the field. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I really, I mean, I, it just, this game just gives me excitement and I know that there's a lot of back and forth and, but it's just, I'm just excited that we won this game because it does set us up a little bit. Right. I mean, after we play Ohio State, we've got a very winnable schedule at that point. And I think that it's just – and maybe, maybe, if there is one shred of possibility of us actually beating Ohio State, which I know is going to be tough, this is the, this this kind of a win can lift that, right? We yeah. can actually get ourselves up for it. The players will play a little bit harder. I mean, it's – we're you never know. It's a home game. It's at night. Camp Randall hopefully is going to be buzzing. So I, I just feel like this is – it's – and, and Ohio State is not as good as they normally are. Now, I know they beat Penn State today. Marvin Harrison is absolutely They're incredible. Cool. But McCord is not a typical Ohio State quarterback. Yeah. You know, he's not an NFL guy, I don't think. And I feel like that's maybe their prime for the, for, the, for the taking. But that also means that our offensive line has to play their best game. Our defensive line has to play their best game. Our right. linebackers have to play their yeah. best game. The, all those drops have to disappear. Like, you have to have every, every catch that is a makeable catch has to be made. Yeah, the I want to read this this one here from uh, Jason Gelden. I said this earlier today. You know how big was the targeting call on that Illinois defender when we were down twenty one to ten? The 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 answer is is we probably don't win this game if he doesn't get pulled. Newton was was effectively causing massive problems in the middle of the line for us, and I think that there's probably at least one play that he blows up if he is involved in this. Hey, Ryan's back. Ryan's back. <laughs> Lost power. Uh, we should probably cut it before I lose power again. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that, that works. But, guys, uh, if I don't know if you guys mentioned it. Make sure you go, go check out Bucket Report, too. I don't know if you guys had a chance to talk about what you guys got going on. Go check out their podcast as well. Go watch the ladies. Uh, did I miss anything while I was well, gone? Yeah, or? so we're going to do our we, – we should mention Bucket Report. We are going to do a show tomorrow night uh, like we typically do, a Sunday night live show. Hopefully, hopefully we both have a chance to rewatch, or at least we'll go a little more in depth into it. We're and hopefully Ryan, Ryan, Ryan's going to join us tomorrow, maybe tomorrow night. Maybe, yeah. Much maybe. like Justin, I didn't know yeah. I had to invite to something with the the tailgate, but um, definitely let me know, <laughs> guys. We got to win. All we right. got to win. That's all that matters. John Burns is a good one to end with. Let's let's start a bill to pay for my my electric bill so I don't lose power. <laughs> uh, for long time everyday listeners, you'll remember during our first. Big giveaway show. I lost power in the middle of that as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, guys, uh, on Wisconsin, go watch the women. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Uh, let's go.